Hello, I am Deborah Eisenbart, and I'm here today along with my colleague Kashaya Hindinya to showcase the Exhibit A Grains tool. This tool, which is available on the Food Buying Guide for Child Nutrition Programs interactive web-based tool, does most of the math for you, making it easier for you to determine the ounce equivalents for grain products listed in Exhibit A. We also want to point out, as an additional resource available to you, we conducted a previous webinar on the tool titled Exhibit A Grains Tool to the Rescue. This webinar was recorded and is now available at the link provided. Today's web presentation will include a review of what was in this previous webinar, in addition to showcasing the most recent updates to the tool, which includes the ability to determine the minimum serving size needed for a grain product in order to meet the grain's requirement for a selected CN program and related age or grade group. To start things off, let's do a quick poll. We would like to know who we have in the audience. Please select the answer that best describes where you work. Is it childcare or schools, or are you with a state agency or FNS office, or do you represent the food industry? And if none of these options fit you, then select other. All right, thanks for taking the poll. It looks like we've got a whole variety of folks on the call today, so this is great. Thanks for being with us. What you see here is an overview of what we will be covering. I'm going to start with a brief overview of the Food Buying Guide digital resources, since the Exhibit A Grains tool is a function of these resources. And then Kashalia will walk you through the Exhibit A Grains tool with some examples using the Food Buying Guide web tool and mobile app. We'll then have some check your understanding questions to review that we, pre that we presented on and have some time at the end for questions. Okay, to start off, I'm going to provide a quick background on the Food Buying Guide, otherwise known as the Food FBG. It's been around for over 70 years and continues to be one of Child Nutrition Program's most popular resources. It assists you in two main ways, to determine how much food to purchase for meals and to determine how much each of these foods credits towards the meal pattern requirements. It continues to be revised with new yield data. It currently contains yield data for more than 2,100 foods. Most recently, yields for Serimi seafood, tempeh, fresh and dry coconut, popcorn, hominy, and hominy grits, and individually quick frozen mushrooms were added. And within the past three years, the Food Buying Guide has transformed from a paper manual to an online interactive tool. And of course, as I just mentioned, it is available as a free mobile app, which you will be seeing today. So let's go ahead and review the main features of these resources. Both the Food Buying Guide interactive web-based tool and the Food Buying Guide mobile app include the following basic features that are available to guest users and registered users of the tool. These features include the ability to search for food items by food groups and further narrow the search by food categories, the capability to do a side-by-side -side comparison of food items within a food category, such as comparing diced canned carrots to diced fresh carrots. In addition, you can create a favorite foods list. You can access the resources as a guest user or registered user. As a registered user, you will have additional features and capabilities such as saving a favorite foods list and then being able to access it at a later time. As a guest user, you can still have save a favorite foods list, but you can only access it during your current session as well as print and email it. Registered users can use the same login account for the interactive web tool and mobile app. Now it's time for another poll question. I'd like to see how many of you are using the Food Buying Guide digital resources. So the options to choose from are as follows. Have you used both the web tool and mobile app? Have you only used the mobile app? Have you only used the web tool? Or do you know about these resources but just haven't used them? Or did you not know about these resources until today? And if we could see the poll results. 
Okay, it looks like most of you are familiar with our resources, but for some of you, these are brand new. So we hope by the end of the webinar, for those of you where this is all new, we hope you have the confidence to successfully use the Food Buying Guide tools. The Interactive Food Buying Guide also has four other features built in. The Recipe Analysis Workbook, the Product Formulation Statement Workbook, the SBG Calculator, and the Exhibit A Grains Tool, which we're going to showcase today. Before diving into the Exhibit A Grains Tool, I'm going to give you a, an overview of the other tools that I just mentioned. First, the Recipe Analysis Workbook, otherwise known as the RAW, is available to registered users. The RAW allows a user to easily search the food buying guide for credible ingredients listed in a standardized recipe. The selected food items will auto-populate into the RAW and calculate the crediting information for those items based on the amounts entered by the user. The meal pattern contribution is then calculated, and the meal pattern contribution statement for the standardized recipe can be saved, printed, and emailed. Next, the product formulation statement workbook is available to food vendors with registered accounts. This feature allows vendors to easily search the food buying guide for food items, which can then be selected and auto-populated into the workbook to calculate the product's crediting information based on the amounts entered by the vendor. In addition, the Product Formulation Statement Workbook will generate a certified contribution statement on the company's letterhead. Manufacturers may use the document generated from the PFS Workbook to communicate with child nutrition program operators on how their product credits toward federal meal pattern requirements. The next tool is the FBG Calculator, which will create a shopping list to assist program operators in ordering and purchasing food for their programs. It is available on both the web tool and the mobile app. Now moving on to the Exhibit A Grains tool. As I mentioned earlier, the Exhibit A Grains tool was developed to simplify the process for determining the grains contribution and ounce equivalents when using Exhibit A. It currently has three functions. It allows you to easily determine the ounce equivalent grains or grain spreads servings based on the grain product's label. It calculates the amount to serve of a grain product based on your desired grains credit and ounce equivalents or grain spread servings. And it now also allows you to determine the amount to serve for a grain product based on the minimum grains requirement by age group, age grade group for a specific child nutrition program. Before going any further, I also want to point out the user guide and training videos with step-by-step -step instructions for using any part of the Food Buying Guide web tool to include the Exhibit A Grains tool, which is circled in red. These resources are available under the Help menu. So time for another poll question. Since the tool is called the Exhibit A Grains tool, let me ask, how many of you are familiar with the Exhibit A Grains requirement for child nutrition programs. Have you heard of it or used it, or is it new to you? Okay, if we could see the results. And it looks like most of you are already familiar with the Exhibit A grades requirement for child nutrition programs. This is, this is good to see. But just to make sure we're all on the same page, Exhibit A lists prepared grain products such as crackers, bread, and bagels in groups based on their average grain content. So grain products that contain similar amounts of credible grains are grouped together. Each group in Exhibit A lists the minimum weight required to supply one ounce equivalent grains for the items in the group. In other words, this is the minimum weight to provide one ounce equivalent, which means the grain product includes 16 grams of credible grains. As an example, if we look at the green products listed in Group A, it includes items such as savory crackers and hard pretzels. You need to serve 22 grams of that product in order to provide one ounce equivalent of credible grains. For Group B, it contains green products such as bagels, bread, and sweet crackers. You need to serve 28 grams to provide one ounce equivalent of credible grains 
And I also want to point out that the column on the far right lists the minimum weight for each group to provide one grain spread serving. For example, you need to serve 25 grams to provide one grain spread serving, which includes 14.75 grams of credible grains. What's provided here is just a screenshot from the first page of Exhibit A. It's actually a three-page resource and contains groups A through I. I'm now going to hand the presentation over to Kishalia to do a demo of the Exhibit A grains tool. Okay, so now we're going to, going to get to the, the live demo demonstration of the Exhibit A grains tool. You can access the interactive food buying guide using the web link provided on the slide. To access the Food Buying Guide interactive web-based tool as a first-time user, you will want to create an eAuth account using this hyperlink if you do not already have an eAuth account. Once you have an eAuth account created, you can log in using your eAuth account or access, oops, sorry, access it as a guest user with limited capabilities, as Deborah mentioned before. Um, with, once you're a registered user, um, you will always have access to your saved information. As a guest user, it's um, what you, your current session. As long as you're on your current session, you haven't closed out, you'll be able to access your information. So before we get, go ahead and get on the tool to try out some example, Let's take a look at the nutrition facts label for our examples that we're going to try. Here is our first example, Amy's English muffin. As you can see, circled in red, the serving size is one muffin that weighs 57 grams. This is the information we will need to use in Exhibit A grains tool. For our second example, we'll look at crispy corn puff cereal. As you can see, the serving size is one and a quarter cup or 32 grams. Again, we will need to enter this information into the Exhibit A Grains tool for that example. Then our last example on the web tool will work with these pretzel twists. Twist. According to the nutrition facts label for these whole grain hard pretzel twists, a serving size is 15 pretzels that weigh 22 grams. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get onto the tool. And once you log in with your eAuth account or as a guest user, this is the home page that you will get to. For today's demonstration, um, let's go ahead and as a guest so that um, just for time's sake. So I'm here and as a guest user and on the, from the home page, we're gonna click on Exhibit A Grain School button. And this is the first screen that you see if you are here for the first time or um, for your first session as a guest user, um, this is our first screen. Uh, once you start entering in and saving um, different products, you'll start seeing a list and that we'll see uh, in a bit. So let's go ahead and try our first example. And before I go further, I wanted to uh, mention that up here on the top, you have um, instructions. And on these instructions, you can see step um, step by step instructions for each of the sections. And note that these numbers on the steps corresponds to the numbers that are listed on the tool to help you help guide you. And I also want to point out the these little blue info icons. These are also there as additional um, assistance and guidance that you can either hover over it and or click on it to open up a open up a pop-up window. So for our first example, we were gonna do Amy's English Muffin. So let's go ahead and write the pro product name. And here you're writing the product name um, the way that it's listed so that this is a way you can easily identify them on your list once you have a, a, a list of items and so that you can e easily identify which product that you had analyzed. And you have the choice to also put your date in if you choose to. In the second, we're going to choose a method, either a ounce equivalent or a grain spread serving. Let's say for this example, we're going to do ounce equivalent. 
And next, now we're going to search for our, our item. So Ingl Amy's English Muffin. So we are not, the Exhibit A's grains chart does not include brand names. So the tool also does not include brand names. So you would have to search on a general term. It could be a um, pretty broad um, term as muffin. Or if you want to be more, more specific, you could also type in English muffin to get a directed. So we typed in muffin, and you can see all the different types of muffins that are available on here. So we're going to choose English muffin for our Amy's English muffin. So we're going to click on add. Say that we're working with this, um, this food item. So for our first example with the Amy's English muffin, we're on the grains contribution tab. And these are, this was an um, examples that we had done in our previous webinar that we'll, we'll review on this one as well. So for grains contribution, we're going to see how much of a serving of these English muffins, what is the contribution? So we know our English muffins are 57 grams, one serving, one muffin with 57 grams. And it automatically calculates for you to, to show that the this one serving of an English muffin provides two ounce equivalent grains. So a 57 gram English muffin provides two ounce equivalent grains. So we want to make sure we save it in case, as I said, as a guest user, you could always, while you're still on the current session, if you save it and you want to go back and edit it while you're still current, you can do so. But as a registered user, you can go back anytime to if you have a step away and come back to it, that you can come back and um, continue working with it. So we're going to go ahead to the next tab, which is the amount to serve. Let's say we want to provide one ounce equivalent grains. How, how many English muffins or how much of the English muffin do we need to serve to provide one ounce equivalent grain? So we're going to go ahead and put one ounce here for the desired grains contribution. And then we come over to the serving size. We know this is one, one English muffin, one piece, or it could do one serving. It's 57 grams. And it automatically calculates out for you to say that to provide one ounce of equivalent grains of the English muffin, you must serve half of it, so half the English muffin to get one ounce of equivalent grains. So now let's move on to the amount to serve by age group grade group tab. This is one of the new enhancements to the Exhibit A grains tool that I'm going to cover today. So this, we have done this based on popular feedback by you, the users. We appreciate all the feedback and concerns and wishes and, and that you have on using the tool and we do our best to implement them. So this was one of, this was a high request to figure out how much to serve by age group for a, a particular program. So let's say we're looking at for CSCFP breakfast and we want to know how much to serve for each age group. So we're going to come here and go ahead and put 57. The serving size is 57. I'm sorry, one, one English muffin is 57 grams, and here we're going to select the program that we're looking at. So we're looking at CSCFP breakfast, and you'll note that it automatically calculates out for you a listing the age group and to show what amount you need to serve to meet the minimum grains requirement. And as reference, it also lists what the minimum grains requirement for each age group is. So we're, let's go ahead and save and move on to our second example. So to, to enter in a new product, we're going to go hit back to list, which will take us to that original page. But now notice that it starts formulating a list with the, the products that we have entered we have already entered in. So we're going to do enter exhibit A product again. And we're going to put in crispy 
popcorn cup cereal. And if since I had already typed this in before is why it's showing up at on an autofill for on my computer. And then we're going to choose the method. We'll go ahead and do ounce equivalent again. And we're going to search for cereal. And again, as I mentioned before, search on the term as terms are listed on the exhibit A grains chart. Um, so brand names will not be listed. So we did cereal, which is a broad search. You'll notice all of the food items that are available on the Exhibit A grains chart with the word cereal. So if we know we know that crispy corn puff cereal is ready to eat cereal, we could have typed that in, or we'll just go ahead and select it from here. And again, we'll do the grain contribution. Um, earlier, we, when we looked at the nutrition facts label, we know that crispy corn puff cereal, a serving size is one and a quarter cup or 32 grams. So here I'm going to, for cereal, you'll notice that we can enter in cup measurement. And you do have to enter in decimal, not fraction. And as a reference guide, we do have a link to the decimal equivalent commonly used fraction. So if you need to quickly check it out. So we have a one and a quarter cup. And for cereal, we're going to identify what type of cereal this is. And this is a puff cereal, so we're going to select puff cereal. And it calculated out the grains contribution. So one serving of this cereal provides one ounce of equivalent grains. So now we're going to go to amount to serve. And let's say. We want to, um, let's see how it looks if we want to say we want to serve a, um, one ounce equivalent grains or for the ready to eat cereal, actually, this it actually makes it easier for you that all you have to do is select the type of cereal it is, a cereal, as we mentioned before, and then just put in the one ounce equivalent is your desired grain. So you don't have to um, identify the, um, the serving size as we did with the English muffin for the cereal. It automatically calculates it out for you so that we, we know that one ounce equivalent grains, um, to get one ounce, to provide a one ounce equivalent grains, you must serve one and a quarter. So then let's go on to the next um, to do amount to serve by age group or grade group for this cereal. Again, we're going to select the type of cereal this is. So this is a puff cereal. And we simply, the next thing we need to do simply is to select which program that we're looking at. Let's say we're looking for school breakfast. We select the program meal and it automatically calculates out uh, for each of the age groups um, the amount to serve to meet the minimum grains requirement. For example, for the for ages, the grade grade group six through eight, the minimum grains requirement is one ounce of equivalent grains. So two in order to meet that, you must serve one point one and a quarter cups. So if you want to take another look at another, another option, um, you can continue to, you can change different programs and you'll see the different, um, how it automatically calculates for the correct program. So again, we're going to go ahead and save it. I'm going to put it back to breakfast, school breakfast and save it and go back, click on back to the list. So we're going to enter our last example that we're going to do, which is the whole grains hard pretzels.
twist. Whole grain hard is our product name to identify it on our list. And this time, let's go ahead and do grain spread serving. And here, I'm going to showcase another enhancement that we have done. So in order to, um, to make searching for the item um, a little bit easier and to get more direct hit, we have added some common other synonyms to the word. For example, if we want to search on we want to search one twist, we automatically get the pretzels twist. Or if we search, let's say we want to do, we're looking for mini pretzels. If we search on mini, you get all the uh, options that, that could have the mini on it. So this is an, another way to help identify the search for the food item to match the exact match that is list, as listed on the exhibit A grains chart. Um, but again, no, no brand names are available, but other common, common names, common synonyms you can search on. So we'll go ahead and search on twist and click add. So here, let's go ahead and do the grains contribution again. So for our pretzels, we know 15 pretzels equal 22 grams. So put 22 grams. And this shows that a serving of these pretzels provides one grain bread serving. Now let's go to amount to serve. And let's say we want to know how much to serve to um, provide a half a grain bread serving. And we know these are 15 pretzels equals 22 grams. And this shows you that to provide a half a grain bread serving of pretzel, these pretzels, we need to serve a seven, seven pretzel twists. And then we're going to go ahead and go to the amount to serve by age group tab again. And here I'm going to show another example of one of the latest enhancements to this tool. We're going to use the same ex label example using the amount to serve um, that we did, we have been doing. So we're going to go ahead and indicate the serving size again, which was 15 pieces. 15 pretzels equals 22 grams. And then here for the program, I'm going to select CSCFP infant. And you'll note that the amount to serve is displayed here, but you will see that in this particular example, it's flagged that pretzels are not credible in the CSCFP infant meal pattern. So this is a new functionality of the tool that we are really excited about. Any grain item that is not credible in infant meal pattern will showcase this message to the user. So let's go ahead and save it. And remember that we logged in as a guest. So by clicking the Save button, when we go back to click back to the list, we can still view all the products that we have worked on right now because since our session is still current, as a registered user, you know you will be able to always go back and access them. So on this page, I also want to point out that you will see our list of all the products that you, we have done today. Um, and you also can you see the action, different actions that you can do. You can go and edit them, go back and edit a product. Um, if you weren't able to finish it um, before you had to log out as a registered user and you come back, you can come back and finish it. And you, and you realize, oh, this is the wrong item. I don't, really, I don't really want to do this item. You can go ahead and delete it altogether. And then you could also get a PDF 
that you can use for documentation purposes that you can save and download and or email to um, as well. So this concludes my demo of the web tool. And I do also quickly want to uh, mention that we the we access the Exhibit A Grains tool on the home page from this button. But you could also access it from under tools. You'll see all the different tools that are available that um, as a as a user, the type of user you are, you'll see what, which ones are available to you. Um, and we can click on the Exhibit A Grains tool from there as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and switch back to our, our slides to do the demo for the mobile app. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the tool on the mobile app. And the SDG mobile app, as Deborah mentioned, is available on both the Apple, iOS, and Android platforms. So far, there have been almost 21,400 downloads of the app. The app allows user accessibility on the go and can be used as either a guest user or a registered user. So the one thing to note about the the food buying guide, the mobile app is, you do want to make sure that you have the most current up-to-date version downloaded. So you can either check on your play, if you have previously downloaded it, you can check on your, on the Play Store or the App Store, make sure that the, you have, if there's any updates available that you go ahead and download the updates as well, so that you have the most current version. And also on the mobile app, when we say going as a guest user, means for, for the app, whatever you are saving, if you're not logged in as a registered user, if you're on your phone and you're using the app, whatever you, when you go in as a guest user, everything is saved on your phone. But if you try to go and use it on, let's say you have the app downloaded on your tablet as well, you will notice that because because you signed on as a guest user, whatever you did on the on your phone will not be available on the tablet. But now, if you did sign on as a registered user, you'll be able to access your saved information from anywhere. Same um, whether it it was saved on the web tool and you want to access it on the mobile app, or vice versa. So let's go ahead and look at the tool, um, the Exhibit A Grains tool on the mobile app. To navigate to the Exhibit A Grains tool, you can click on the More, More tile and select Exhibit A Grains tool from the menu option. Another way to access the Exhibit A Grains tool is to click on the navigation menu, which is also sometimes referred to as the hamburger menu that is on the top right hand corner here, and select Exhibit A Grains tool from the list. So we'll go ahead and do some examples as we did on the web tool. For our first example, let's look at Kay's brand cheese crackers. As you can see, circled in red is the serving size, which is 27 crackers or 30 grams. This is the first screen of the Exhibit A Grains tool. If you already have analyzed some products, your saved products will be available here, just as it, I showed you on the web tool. To start with a new grain product, we're going to click on Enter Grains Product button and enter in the brand name here, brand name and product name. As I mentioned, this is a way to identify which product you're working on. So we're, we're going to go ahead and enter in Case Cheese Crackers. Then we're going to select Exhibit A Item. And this is where you can search for the item. To search for an item as listed on Exhibit A, you're going to enter in the grain product as listed on Exhibit A, as I mentioned before. It does not have brand names listed such as Case Cheese Crackers, so you will need to search for the general terms such as crackers, or you can be more specific and search for snack cracker.
all exhibit all exhibit A items that contains the keyword you searched on will populate and then you can select and click on the add button to add. You can always refer to the exhibit A grains chart to see how items are listed. So under the tool tip, you'll find a link to the exhibit A grains chart. You would also find helpful instructions for navigating the tool on any screen that you see when you see this icon. So this is like the blue info icon that I showed on the web tool, um, and we have the info icon here as well. So on the web tool, we have the instructions on that the accordion. We have instructions here listed under the info icon. By clicking on the plus sign here, it will expand to show information from the exhibit A grains chart. So then clicking on the minus for this particular item. So for the crackers, you see all of the information that it is listed on the exhibit A grains chart. And then clicking the minus sign will toggle it to close. Sorry. So from this screen, similar to the web tool, we will select the contribution method, either ounce equivalent grains or grain spread serving. We will select ounce equivalent grains for our first example. And then we can then choose the calculation to, we're going to calculate to either calculate the grains contribution, amount to serve, or the amount to serve by age group, grade group. So let's first calculate the grains contribution for the cheese crackers. And from on here, we're gonna go ahead and enter in the serving size as provided on the product label, which is 30 grams, and then select the measurement grams. So a 30 grams, so it, and it'll calculate out the grains contribution. So the grains contribution is for a 30 gram serving of cheese crackers will provide 1.25 ounce equivalent grains. So again, we wanna, we just need to make sure we save our results. Next, let's, let's calculate the amount to serve. And from the same screen, you could also be on the same screen that you had just done the grains contribution and then you want to um, you save your results and then you want to go ahead and try um, looking at the amount to serve instead. You can be on the same screen. So we're going to go, let's say we're trying to find out to provide one ounce equivalent grain, how many crackers do we need to serve? We're going to go ahead and put in the information from this, this nutrition facts label, which is 27 crackers equals 30 grams. And then it'll calculate to tell you us that in order to provide one ounce of equivalent grains, we need to serve 20 of these case, these crackers. And we're going to go ahead and click Save Changes. Now, next, let's calculate the amount to serve by age group or grade group for our crackers. So let's let's say we decide this is what we want to really look at, not the amount to serve, so we can be on the same screen. Otherwise, we can go back and start a new product again. But let's say we're gonna we decided we want to look at the amount to serve by age grade group. We're then gonna hit select or enter in our serving size information, which is 27 crackers equals 30 grams. Next, after the entering the serving size information from the nutrition facts label, we can scroll down and select our program and meal that we're serving. Let's say in this case, we're doing CSCFP lunch or supper. And just as we had done on the web tool, selecting the program and meal. And next, it shows, as soon as we choose the program, you'll see that all of the age group for this program appears. And here, because of um, 
for the mobile app because of the spacing, we know you know that just to look at a specific age group, you just have to click on the plus sign to open it up to get that information. And you can toggle it back by clicking on the minus sign. So here in this example, well in, for ages three to five, you need to serve 10, 10 crackers to, in order to meet the minimum grains requirement for this age group. I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And then to go back and enter in another, a new, a whole new product, we're gonna click on the arrow at the top and get, um, and we'll go and do a new product. But before that, let's go ahead and look at a nutrition fact label for our second example. This is Sarah's cereal flakes. And as you can see, the serving size is 3 fourths cup or 32 grams. So we're back to the first screen of the exhibited grains tool where you can enter in the grain product. And we're gonna go ahead and type in Sarah's cereal flakes to identify this product that we're seeing. Next, we'll do the search and select item as listed in Exhibit A. So we can type in cereal and click search to get the whole list of different food items that are available with the word cereal, just as I showed on the web tool. So we can select the item that matches our product. So, and here for this example, we know it's a ready to eat cereal. So we're gonna go ahead and click add. And then we're here to this screen again, where we're going to select the grains contribution. Um, before, I'm sorry, we're gonna choose the method and we'll go ahead and do an ounce equivalent again. And then we're gonna go ahead and check out the grains contributions. How much does a serving of this provide? So, we're going to proceed using um, the three-fourths cup. So we know the three-fourths cup um, or 32 grams. And you can, as I showed on the web tool, you can do a cups or grams or ounces for the cereal. But um, for this example, we'll go ahead and um, proceed with using um, cups. And again, you have you can, instead of using the decimal, uh, you need to use the, put it as a decimal instead of a fraction. And next, ready to eat cereal, just as I showed on the web tool, you do need to select the type of cereal it is. And in this case, it's, it's flakes and round. And here we go, the, um, cal the grain contribution is calculated out to show that a, a serving of cereal, cereal flakes provides 0.75 ounce equivalent grains. So we're going to go ahead and save our work. And then now let's go ahead and do amount to serve. And again, we're going to keep it at the ounce equivalent and choose amount to serve. And for ready to eat cereal, we have to make sure we select that the type of cereal it is, which is flakes and rounds for this, for this fake cereal. Next, we're gonna enter in our desired grains contribution. And let's say for us, our, we, our desired grains contribution is one ounce equivalent grain. And this calculated out to show that you need to serve one cup in order to provide one ounce equivalent grain. So again, a, re a reminder, just if you wanna save your work to keep this information. Now let's try the amount to serve by age grade group. For ready to eat cereal, we need to select the type of cereal it is. Again, flakes and round. And then next, next we're gonna go ahead and select the program and meal we're serving. In this case, we're going to serve the cereal at breakfast in CSAP. From where we are, we just need to move this cursor down a little bit on the screen. And 
after scrolling down, you will then select the, you can see the um, amount to serve by the different age groups. So let's say we're looking at ages 13 to 18, you can click on the plus sign to expand to get the information to say that for ages 13 to 18, you need to serve one cup of cereal in order to provide the minimum grains requirement, which is a one ounce, one ounce equivalent grains. Next, we'll go ahead and save our changes. And to head back to the main screen of the tool, select the arrow at the top left corner. When using the Exhibit A Grains tool at the bottom of the screen, you can select Share whenever you see the button Share, where you'll be able to get a printout as a PDF where you'll be able to print your results or email it. Based on how your phone is set up, you'll be able to email it, or if you have it hooked up to a printer, you'll be able to um, also um, print it or save it to your file. The PDF printout looks exactly the same as it does on the web tool, and you'll be able to access, if you were a registered user and you saved it, you'll be able to go and access it on the web tool as well. So we're back on our My Products page, uh, which is the home page for the Exhibit A Grains, uh, Grains tool, and we can see the list of the products that we have added and saved so far. By selecting any of the products, we will see a summary of the results we have saved for that product. So this is the summary for Case Cheese Crackers. As you can see, we had calculated out the grain's contribution. We had calculated amount to serve to provide a one ounce of equivalent grains. And we also calculated the, um, the amount to serve by age group and grade group. If we want to delete one of our products, we need we can simply at the bottom of the screen when you see delete product, click on that button. It will delete the whole product from your list. Now let's look at that one last example. Here we go. Here we have cinnamon bear crackers. And according to the nutrition facts label, a serving size is 24 crackers, which weighs 30 grams. So we're back to the home page of the Exhibit A Grains tool, and we're going to start with a new grains product where we will enter in the name Cinnamon Bear Crackers. And after entering the product name, you'll be prompted to search for the product. So as mentioned earlier when I was doing the search on the web tool, item keyword search has recently been expanded to include similar terms for some of the Exhibit A Grains products. So for this example, if we search on bear, you will see sweet crackers in the results. And we will click Add button to further assess our product. We will then select the, for this example, let's go ahead and do grain spread serving. And we're going to calculate the grains contribution. Let's go ahead and enter in the, the serving size, with, which is 24 pieces equals 30 grams, and which shows that a serving of our bear crackers gives us one, provides one grain spread serving. Remember to go ahead and save your changes. And then let's try out the amount to serve instead of the grain contribution. Let's say we want to determine how many crackers to serve to obtain a half a grain spread serving. So again, using the serving size information on the nutrition facts label, we're going to select, we're going to enter in 24 pieces and using the, and which weighs 30 grams using the arrow you can access the drop down menu to select the correct unit and the amount to serve is calculated for you. So here you need to serve 10 of these bear crackers to provide our half a grain bread serving. 
And lastly, is well, let's look at the amount to serve by age group or grade group using the serving size information found in the nutrition facts label. 24 pieces equals to 30 grams. And you can select the program and meal that you, you that uses the grain spread serving method. So when um, since we had selected grain spread method, when you on this drop down menu, you're going to see all of the programs that can use grain spreads method. And here we have preschool snacks selected. So for preschool, you have the option to either look at ages one through two or ages three to five. So let's say we're looking at ages three to five that shows that for this age group, you need to serve 10 crackers to meet the minimum grain spread serving, which um, of a half a grain spread serving. So this concludes our walkthrough, and the, I'm sorry, make sure that you save your changes. And this clicks, and you can also, um, another reminder that you can also share from, meaning share so that you can get the printout of your PDF email it or print it or save it. And also, if you want to delete the item altogether, um, let's say you accidentally entered the wrong product, you can delete the Exhibit A item and go back and enter in the correct item. So this concludes our walkthrough of the Exhibit A Grain School. We're now going to check your knowledge with a few interactive quiz questions. So here's the first question. True or false, you are able to determine the amount to serve by different age grade groups for the various programs and meals. True or false? Okay, let's see the results, please. You are correct. It is true. So true or false, when determining the amount to serve for the infant meal pattern, grain products that are not credible, include a message stating that they are not credible. So true or false? So the poll is almost done. Okay, can we please share the results? Again, for those of you who answered true, you are correct. The infant meal pattern includes a limited number of credible grain products. If you select the infant meal pattern and try to determine the amount to serve for a grain product that is not credible, a message will display that it is not credible. So here's another question. I have a green product, Anne's brand animal crackers. What term should not be entered into the search field on the Exhibit A grains tool? Is it Anne's brand animal crackers, animal crackers, sweet crackers, or crackers? Okay, looks like we're done. And can we see the results, please? And you are right. The answer is A, Anne's Animal Cracker. Remember that brands name, brand names are not included on Exhibit A. You must search for the food item as listed in Exhibit A or with the, or similar names. The, it must match the item as listed on Exhibit A. Our last question, where can I find tips to help me navigate the Exhibit A Grains tool? Is it the user guide? training video, blue info icon, instruction accordion, or all of the above. And please, let's see the results, please. You are correct. All of, the, all of these are resources for you to help you navigate the tool. Now, I'm going to pass it back over to Deborah to con conclude our... Hi, everyone. I'm now back, and so this concludes our presentation, um, what Kashalia just covered. So we will now take some questions, and we'll try to respond to as many questions as we can. Please remember, you can always email us with your additional questions. And we want to let you know that if you have questions regarding these specific technical resources that we covered today, please contact the Nutrition and Technical Assistance Branch within Child Nutrition Programs using the email address provided at the bottom of the screen. 
And for all other technical related questions such as crediting or CM labeling, please continue to work with your state agency or regional office contacts. Finally, please feel free to visit our website, subscribe to our bi-monthly e-newsletter, connect with us via email at teennutrition at usda.gov, and follow us on Twitter. And before closing out of the WebEx browser today, please make sure to fill out our brief post-webinar survey. If you'd like to um, receive a continuing professional education unit, certificate from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics Commission on Dietetic Registration, you can provide your CDR number in the post-webinar survey so we can send you a certificate. Thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day.